I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Constantine Richter, the CEO and founder of Block Damon. Constantine, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine. Likewise. So I'd love to kick off the interview by talking a little bit about what are the problems that you saw companies entering into this market and what is the main solutions that Block Daemon is looking to fill into those problems? Yeah, great question. Uh, we started Block Daemon a little over two years ago after I've been uh, trying to keep an Ethereum node in sync um, you know, for quite a few months and rather unsuccessfully, not being an engineer uh, myself, but knowing quite a bit about how to deploy VMs and working with sort of cloud formation tooling uh, from my previous experiences as an entrepreneur. And, um, and so, the the that was sort of late 2017 when the crypto market was exploding and everyone was launching tokens left right and center and valuations were going through the roof the the chasm between uh, that enthusiasm and the sad reality of the physical network infrastructure was what uh, led me to uh, start uh, block daemon which is really dedicated to bridge that void right so mm -hmm. to uh, democratize node operations for all um, and to help uh, with uh, decentralization and functionality, right? And so decentralized networks require a lot of orchestration. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to ensure that these networks perform quality with to a high standard, mm -hmm. and it starts with a quality node. And so that's really at the core of what uh, Block Daemon does. Mm -hmm. Great. And there are a lot of new companies looking to integrate blockchain and, and spin up nodes to start integrating that into their business units. And it can get very technical, um, but I know Block Daemon is doing a lot to make it simpler. Can you explain for you know, the businessmen and investors that aren't really developers, you know, how exactly is implementing Block Daemon solving all this time and money for on the development side to get blockchain integrated into companies? Yeah. Sure. So the, the, the key thing to understand is that a node is the physical um, uh, individual ledger that makes, you know, one small part of a decentralized ledger. So there's hundreds of copies and each of these copies live in individual nodes. And so in order to really have control and participate in the network, running a full node is very often a core requirement for institutions who want to really offer warranties and liabilities and need to guarantee the adequacy of the information that they rely on. And uh, each... Um, uh, blockchain protocol speaks a very different language than the other. And so deploying a full Bitcoin node is very different than doing that with Ethereum and doing it, you know, for any of the other uh, more popular um, um, uh, protocols in the space like Aeon in Canada, for example. And so these uh, consensus mechanisms are always different software implementations that require different types of machine sizing. And so there's a lot of speciality knowledge within each protocol. And so uh, in order to um, really stay on top and ensure that your node is synced and qualitative all the time, you need to have an expert who is on staff 24-7 because mm -hmm. really what you're doing with a node is you're, the node is only functional if it's functional all the time. A node that works 80% of the time isn't really what you need. And so really what you're buying more than the physical setup and the deployment, which obviously we also automate and Mm -hmm. and do a lot faster than anyone else. It's actually the continuous management and performance, so you never have to worry about your node. Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of what um, that's really what um, enterprises and institutions are buying is um, the ability to not have to worry about is the node synced correctly? Are the right transactions finding its way through the node? Mm -hmm. um, am I going to get in trouble? Am I causing network delays? Am I evened up for an investor um, if I'm on a validator and I've token connected on my nodes? Um, and, and is the value of my tokens at risk. And so you're really buying peace of mind uh, when you come to a solution like us. Mm -hmm. That's great. And can you talk a little bit about maybe any specifics behind if you're a company and you're considering whipping up some nodes and you're, you're speaking with Block Daemon, but then you're co contemplating just doing it yourself, you know, how much easier is it to just use Block Daemon? And is it really technical to go through all of this node infrastructure uh, in-house? Yeah, I think th the key thing is, is with us, the whole complexity is extrapolated away from you while still giving you ownership and security around the node, right? Mm -hmm. And so you do have all the privileges and the benefits that come from owning a full node. Um, but what you don't have is the continuous um, uh, uh, 
let's call it kicking of the note in order to ensure that it's in sync. So mm -hmm. these nodes are really uh, smart transmitters that interact with any any you know other node in the network within certain time intervals. And so a Bitcoin node is every 10 minutes and there's nodes that do that in nanoseconds. And so um, you need to make sure that every time you hit the target. And so the technical complexity of that is fairly high. Mm -hmm. um, if specifically, if your standard is, you know, above 99.9%, for mm -hmm. example. And so that's really the, the, the complexity. I'd say for e even the, the more mature and larger networks, it, unless you really build up uh, a large scale infrastructure organization, it's just also not cost conducive. Mm -hmm. And so the um, companies that run infrastructure in-house, maybe the top 20 large exchanges, and then you're slowly coming into the water where it's like, hey, can we outsource this to streamline some of the mm -hmm. cost? And so, um, you know, we have 20 engineers that do this for a living full time around and we've commoditized this, right? So um, what is expensive and complex for you is, uh, you know, cheap and works perfectly with us. And so mm -hmm. there's just really no need to make that uh, uh, one of the key challenges your business has. Very similar with how cloud computation and cloud computing worked very early mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. right? So... Um, people moving certain things away from uh, on-prem, their own data centers and saving costs and focusing on the real applications um, uh, while using cloud is very similar. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that it can be very different setting up a Bitcoin node to an Ethereum node. And there's also a lot of enterprises that are experimenting with private or hybrid blockchains, you know, like Hyperledger or IBM's technology. Does Blockdaemon work with all of these different types of infrastructures if the company has a certain specific set of needs? Uh, uh, yes and no. So we, we like to support public networks that are based on open source communities just because we feel those make for better decentralized networks. And mm -hmm. ultimately, uh, you know, we want to be, um, uh, you know, we want to build things that find actual customer use cases. Um, there are permission networks that are, you know, needed and enterprises want to run. And uh, we make a decision on a case-by-case -case basis uh, if we actually onboard it on our platform, which is it comes with clusters, backup systems, monitoring mm -hmm. modules, reporting modules, all that type of stuff. And so when something sits on our platform, um, it comes with a very high degree of quality. Mm -hmm. And uh, we evaluate each protocol very carefully if if we actually onboard it because we need to make we need to be able to build a viable business model on top of it because ultimately each protocol we support requires a dedicated full-time engineer mm -hmm. as well as you know customer service um, and uh, infrastructure uh, uh, resources uh, on, on our side and so yes we support hyperledger for example uh, we're the first um, uh, network uh, cloud deployment tool on Hyperledger. Um, and we support uh, permissioned Ethereum nodes for particular projects. That said, we see a lot less demand on those than we see mm -hmm. actually for the larger public networks. Mm -hmm. oh, that's really interesting. Um, and one of my questions is about the infrastructure that Blockdaemon uses to actually strengthen the security of companies that are looking to you know, run this technology. Is there extra security benefits um, from doing it with block in rather than in-house as well? It depends a lot on what in-house looks like, right? Mm -hmm. To be clear. I mean, we're not doing rocket science, but what we do is bring best practices from the traditional um, um, InfoSec world to the crypto blockchain world, which mm -hmm. uh, as a combination doesn't happen very often. So we're internally ISO compliant. Uh, we adhere to large uh, international um, software security standards, we get externally audited. And so our whole concept is of bridging the two, right? So mm -hmm. meeting enterprises and institutions halfway and uh, offering them security and cert certifications to assure them that what we do um, is viable and secure. And obviously, you know, we integrate and work with a lot of the larger customers. And a lot of the times, you know, we have to go through large procurement and purchasing departments, and there's a, quite a vetting process going on. And so what I would say is that as the most battle-tested system in the space, we were the first hybrid cloud platform offering node deployment solutions in blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a lot of bad stuff happen. Like any, any bug that can happen, happened to us at one point in time on some protocol. And so because we're a SaaS company, we sell nodes for dollars a month, you know, um, our, a good chunk of our product roadmap is bug reports from existing solutions. And so mm -hmm. um, building experience in this space is uh, really the most valuable insurance you can have in order to protect yourself against uh, attacks and anything else in combination with certification 
and rigorous standards. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. And question about your customer base and you know deploying nodes, it's, nodes. It seems like something that could happen at a global scale. Do you work with companies all around the globe, or is there a specific region or an industry that is you know working closely mostly with Block Daemon? We're a global company, I would say, at this point in time. Uh, we have offices in Ireland, Germany, and in the US. Uh, we're also currently building out a footprint in Singapore and Asia. Okay. Um, and so because we're a software platform and we're self-provisioning, people can go to our website, blockdaemon.com, and uh, purchase and launch nodes in all regions in the world. We have data centers. We are, we're integrated in, uh, in Asia, Australia. Um, uh, and different subsections in, 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 in Asia, for example. And so that's been a market where we've seen a lot of growth, um, uh, very similar to Europe, where mm -hmm. we're also kind of increasing our footprint, um, where uh, we you know, find uh, uh, markets that are uh, craving uh, what we offer, which is mm -hmm. you know, plug and play, secure, high performance infrastructure. Definitely. And you seem to be expanding quite rapidly. And Block Damon did just complete a 5.5 million strategic funding round. So congratulations to that. Could you talk a little bit about your partners in the raise and what are you using that capital for moving forward with expansion? Yeah, so we have um, some large enterprise sort of SaaS type investors like Comcast Ventures, um, Bold Start, Lira Hippo, some New York centric uh, investors where we're headquartered and where we came out of, out of the sort of startup ecosystem. Um, and in this round, we also invited some of the leading more blockchain crypto centric investors to participate. So we always, as a, you know, we try to do both. So we try to have traditional investors who really force us to think through classical SaaS metrics, uh, scaling, revenue, all the sort of stuff that keeps you really grounded and, and, and focused, as well as with the guys who might have a much more, uh, a, a higher appreciation for the sort of blue sky potential of what decentralized networks can accomplish. And so, mm -hmm. um, and so in this round, we invited uh, Hashkey, CoinShares, Blockchain.com. Uh, we have folks like CoinFund uh, who participated, uh, Spice VC, uh, Fenbushi Capital, a kinetic, so a really strong a selection of Asian investors specifically. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see that there are some European funds as well as Asian funds, because we do find um, it's easiest for us to go to market alongside investors who have other vested interests in a respective market, because mm -hmm. um, it's a great way to get introductions and it's a great way to find leads and, and identify opportunities because you have local experts you can reach out to. So we rely, we rely very heavily on our partners and investors mm -hmm. and uh, they're also all customers. And so it's an exciting process, um, but you know, there's, uh, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a hard time um, on, on you know, structurally managing obviously the current uh, pandemic, but for us, it's been the most uh, productive time in terms of uh, revenue growth and scale. So we have uh, fortunately not seen a lot of impact of the crisis. Quite the contrary, there's actually a lot of networks going to mainnet. Um, a lot of our customers are actual foundations that are launching physical blockchains. And so um, you'll see that a lot of the large POS networks are all slated to go live, uh, you know, as we speak, really, and so every time that happens, um, you know, we we make a little business, and so for us, it's been a very rewarding time. Um, key funding purpose for us is to uh, one ensure that we can scale up um, in certain regions, as well as to build out customer support, all the sort of types of things that you need when you're slowly moving up into um, a, you know a more uh, professional setup where we want to make sure we offer 24 seven customer support, where mm -hmm. we can really rely on um, also the quality of people that we bring in uh, while also supporting more and more solutions. And so part of it is engineering, part of it is uh, sales focus, and then part of it is customer service focused. Very cool, Constantine. It sounds like a great list of partners that you have. And I agree, having that mixture of you know, traditional investment firms as well as the crypto uh, investment firms is a, is a great synergy. So uh, all the best moving forward with that. Um, you know, we're running out of time here, but you know, if you're to bring one thing to the table in terms of what's coming next for Block Daemon in the next six to 12 months, uh, what do we have to look forward to? It's a great question. I think for us, the next big step is to actually 
uh, allow people to deploy and manage nodes on any infrastructure in the world and use block daemon plugins. So rather than actually buying a full node that we manage and, and service, you actually, you know, we, we will sell you the tools we use internally to do this directly. And so, uh, which will be a lot cheaper and uh, uh, lead to a lot more nodes be run in the world. So that's uh, what we're excited about over the next 12 months is to see the explosion of nodes to support all these exciting projects that we see go live. Hmm, that is exciting. Uh, so if there are companies or just community members looking to learn more, reach out and get involved with Block Daemon, what's the best way for them to learn more information? Yeah, blockdaemon.com is the, the best way to do that. We have a marketplace. You can kind of surf all the different protocols. Uh, we You can find out what these protocols do, the machine specs, software requirements in order to interact with them. And then we have live chat um, also uh, right on the site. And I'm in it all the time talking to customers. And so we're obviously working on making this very easy. And so if uh, you're trying to get in touch and it takes you more than uh, a minute and you're persistent enough, tell me about it because I'm dedicated to uh, make response times uh, very fast and sufficient. So mm. uh, please come and visit us. And we offer free uh, shared Bitcoin nodes also to get people started uh, to experience what it looks like to actually physically run a node. Mm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Constantine. I will leave those links in the description box below for the viewers. I appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. All the best with everything moving forward with Block Daemon, and let's follow up in the near future. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ashton.